This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Today we're talking about character design or more specifically pet peeves in character design that people find cliche, repetitive or tropes that we rather see more often than usual. Hey how's it going and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to read everyone's opinions on character design tropes that are sometimes overused or annoying from this thread created by the Twitter user Mr. Snappy Eagle and we are going to talk about it. So first we have cluttered design. Some people pull it off perfectly when they add a ton of details and such but then you got some other designs that just clash and are more of a clutter. I think this mostly happens with characters in video games since it's much more easier to just add a ton of design elements on a character because it looks cool as a concept but in actuality it's really a hot mess of non-functional elements that are basically not serving any specific purpose to the character aside from making the character look cool. In 2D animation however you have to think of how these designs will be recreated multiple times and drawn from different angles and perspectives so at that point adding a ton of detail on the character wouldn't make any sense at all so character designers keep designs simple and leave only functional accessories on the character and add the least amount of detail while still maintaining a cool looking design for the character when a character has an over sexualized design and it absolutely doesn't fit the character's personality nor does it even seem practical to wear. Also when a character merely turns their head and their tits need to yank and jiggle like someone slammed the brakes going 100 meters per hour. Nothing wrong with having a figure and showing some skin. There is a difference between being sexy and being sexualized. Being sexy is intrinsic whilst being sexualized is extrinsic. Okay this one has been a running gag in the concept art industry for a while now and this trope was extremely popular during the time when card games like Applebot were very popular. It was basically a female knight or warrior princess. It really didn't matter whatever her role was but this character would be dressed in the most obnoxious looking armor that basically wasn't really serving any purpose other than making the character look hot in a rather awkward situation. Like you're supposed to be fighting these giants and monsters and protecting yourself from attacks but then again tight fitted see through clothing with cleavage showing is much more important than the huge monster trying to attack you I guess. It's kind of funny because you can show skin without really sexualizing the character. Zenobia is literally topless but doesn't feel sexualized because she's essentially a female Inosuke from Demon Slayer. Pyra shows significantly less skin than her but the camera angles do her dirty. Also another problem I have is when some designs try to sexualize minors inappropriate. I find this rather unusual and weird and I think some characters who are minors will benefit from not having some of their features overly sexualized and showing off traits that are rather unusual for minors or someone who is underage. Next we have the male and female animal character design troupe where the features on the female character is usually much more emphasized so the audience can tell which one is male and which one is female. Like <laughs> I just can't. Now this design trope is very common especially with characters that are animals and also some anthropomorphic characters where they think the only way the audience can tell if a character is female is by making their features much more pronounced than the male and making them either sexualized or flirtatious. I just can't seem to understand why this keeps happening. It's as if they don't realize there are other attributes and features of the female gender that make a character obvious as a female without having to sexualize them. Like Kitty Soft Paws from the new Puss in Boots for example. You can tell she is a female character without her having humongous mammary glands or batting eyes at every single opportunity because her silhouette, poise and stance are all derivative of a femi fatale and are instantly recognizable when you look at both characters. Now before we get on with the rest of the video, here's a brief word from the sponsor of today's video. Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one web building tool and all-in-one platform for creating quick, simple to use and highly professional looking websites for hosting your art portfolio, selling merchandise or creating a catalog for your art for later use. Squarespace allows you to literally build and design 
an entire functional website using any of their pre-existing templates while having total control over every feature on the website. So you can edit and move things around to your liking and make your website look exactly how you wanted it to look in your head. Squarespace is giving a free trial for you to try out building a portfolio for yourself. So head over to squarespace.com slash Mohamed Agbadi to start a free trial and use code Mohamed Agbadi to save 10% off your first purchase. Links will be in the description of this video and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Next we have the anime side mouths or when a character is talking and the mouth is on the cheek and it always looks awkward. I think this one always looks funny but like not in a bad way to be honest since anime is mostly known for being stylized and having exaggerated proportions and features this also means that some of these facial expressions of their characters are also going to be stylized and exaggerated but sometimes this is just done so the animators can save time and work within a small budget by repeating already drawn frames instead of having to make an entire new animation for the mouth but i still find it funny when they draw the stylized mouth and still add the profile of the lips closed like bruh the mouth is moving what is this when all the female characters are sexy ladies with human proportions and all the male characters are just weird scrunkly or ugly or barely look even human. I think it's safe to say we all like to see muscle mommies every now and then and not all female characters have to be sexy ladies. But if a show has a mix of male and female characters and the design choices between both of them are unusually jarring and it isn't entirely based on the theme of the show and is not intentional or purposeful, then I guess the show is probably trolling the male characters by making them ugly or weird looking. Next we have the dark skinned guy with white hair in anime. I wouldn't say this is an overdone trope though. Even if it has happened a number of times, there are still multiple dark skinned characters in anime that don't have white hair and are not the same Pantone color as OP is suggesting. When a character who wears glasses takes them off or falls off and the eyes turn out to be dots, that's really awkward. I think they do this intentionally so the audience can understand the character has bad eyesight or something. But I know it always looks so funny when it's just tiny dots and they still make them blink. You didn't even include the best one where they had no eyes and the glasses were the eyes <laughs> when they draw the eyes literally inside the glasses of the characters so when they take them off the eyes go off with the glasses as well <laughs> now that's actually funny when characters have perfect circles for eyes it never looks appealing now this i actually don't have a problem with since round googly eyes can actually look kind of cute in cartoons but when it looks awkward is when both eyes are just perfect circles on both sides of the face i feel like it usually looks better if one eye is drawn slightly over the other to show perspective and the direction the face is facing and it just generally makes the character's face look a little bit more interesting next we have celebrity cameos in cartoons that don't even try to stylize the individual to fit the world. I like celebrity cameos in cartoons, especially when they are used as parody or to land jokes in the episode. I think the show that did this perfectly was The Boondocks and they had multiple celebrities and notable people make appearances from Kim Kardashian, R. Kelly to Obama, with each of these characters bearing close resemblance to their real life counterparts but still drawn in the same style as the show so it never looked forced or out of place. You just knew the characters were part of the same world and fit in perfectly especially with the theme of Boondocks and its commentary on pop culture and politics. Next we have art styles that go from being simplistic to overly detailed. For instance, South Park's art style became way too detailed. Example. A horse from season 1 compared to a horse from season 25. Usually shows that start out with simplified styles are designed that way based on the particular art director's vision for how they wanted the characters to look and as long as that particular art director was in the lead, the characters would always maintain that same look as the show progresses through the seasons. But when art direction changes hands and new character designers are brought to work on the show, the new AD might have a different vision from the original concept and will probably want to explore something else which leads to the show having a different style or look which is why sometimes it becomes much more realistic. But these are my opinions anyway, sometimes they may just get changed for other reasons too. Next we have character designs that are meant to only be seen 
it from the side i think this happens a lot with characters that are goofy and funny looking so when you see them from another angle they just look so stupid and out of place it's mostly because most of these characters are designed to be mostly seen on screen from a certain angle but then they might make it a joke to turn the character around in 3d just so the audience can see how stupid the character looks from another angle they are not familiar with next we have the corporate art style now I personally have no problem with this art style and I think it works best when used in graphic design work and corporate videos and I guess some artists could also probably make it work in 2D animation but it's just not something I'm interested in enough for me to care about it that much. I know this art style gets a lot of hate on social media because of how awkwardly drawn and quirky looking some of the characters are and how some of their body parts are overly exaggerated but I guess if it works it works. Over designing. Look at how how gorgeous the Batman Beyond skin from Arkham City is. Simple, conveys the look of the character perfectly and fits the setting. Compare now to the atrocity on the right from Arkham Knight. I think this falls under cluttered design. Just adding a bunch of unnecessary detail, junk armor, gear and things that don't even make any sense. Like what does this even do? It's like the thing they did in Marvel movies although it's not as bad as this but when they bring a character from the comic who has a sleek design and simple suit. They just add a ton of extra elements on their costume to make them look cooler for film. Next we have when only eyelids are used for expressions rather than eyebrows. This so much this. It feels odd when a character has no eyebrows and instead just close their eyes up to 15% to convey anger. Every time they do those expressions they look like they're bored and at the same time so stupid. I've seen this trope happen a lot with characters where they either use their eyes and eyelids to emphasize their facial expressions without using their eyebrows or they don't even have eyebrows at all sometimes and it always just looks awkward when the eyebrows are just stuck in one position or not moving with the rest of the character's face. Some character designers also consider this when drawing characters so what they do is they either draw the eyebrows of the character as part of the eyes themselves or they just draw the eyebrows as a line above the eyes which could also serve as eyelids too. But in some expressions when the character is being extra cute the eyelashes are drawn under the eyelid as well. I think all of this is just mostly personal preference and the particular look or design the show is going for. Next we have country flags on characters. When characters have flags on their designs. I think the only character that rocks this look well is probably Captain America since his suit is based off of colors of the flag and is loosely filled with different elements of the star spangled banner across his entire costume. Other characters who have their country flag as part of their costume are also mostly governed by the higher ups as heroes or are led by authorities of the country which also makes it seem like this trope only works if the character serves as a mascot for their country and it means for the creators to infuse a little national pride. Next we have out of place textures on characters. When people try drawing plate textures but it isn't angled at all so it just looks like something that was imported onto the image. Now this I haven't seen happen a lot but I think it probably is as a result of just trying to save the animation cost because drawing the different lines of the texture repeatedly for over a thousand frames will be quite time consuming. So the animators just throw in a texture to save themselves the headache of doing all that unnecessary work. Sometimes it ends up looking good and other times it just looks rather stiff especially in 2D animation. Next we have when the eyes are over or on top of the hair. Now this is a trope I am guilty of doing myself so I'll explain. <laughs> Now I usually do this because first off I don't want all that hair to cover the other eye I spent hours learning how to draw because it's so hard so therefore you must see it in full view in front of the hair. <laughs> Does it look good to me? Yes. Could it have been covered with hair? Also yes but I just prefer having the eyes show through depending on the final look I want my drawing to have. If I'm making a normal simplified drawing then I'd leave the eyes like that after painting it. But if I'm going for a more realistic looking drawing then obviously I'll have to take the eyes out and cover it up with hair and paint the hair properly. Now I know some people might hate this and it's fine. You're allowed to dislike things. It's your opinion. And for people who draw like this and are guilty as well. Uh, hi, hey, how's it going brother? brethren family anyways that's all i have for you today please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it share it with a friend and subscribe to the channel if you're new here i'll see all you pretty penguins in the next video peace